Hello everybody. Uh, I was given this a little while ago by a friend and I'm considering what my options are as to what to do with it. I'm thinking maybe a street scene or something in there or something cool like that. Uh, if you'd like to comment uh, and tell me what sort of thing you might like to see me make to put in here, uh, please comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll now get on with the uh, video. Thanks, bye. Hello there. Uh, welcome to another one of my Constantina sketchbook bits. Um, you know by now that uh, this is a series of painting, paintings, drawings, sketchings, you name it, uh, inspired by uh, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett's Good Omens. If you haven't read it, read it. If you haven't watched the TV series, do that too. Just because, why not? Uh, this one is slightly different format to the other ones I've done because normally I do a double page spread. So it's basically uh, the Constantina folds into a sort of rectangular shape. And I've been doing it so that it's been just slightly bigger than the square. This time though, I'm using each um, area as a different thing. So this is, you can probably guess if you know the book uh, that these, well, basically this is four sections. So what, what comes in fours? Uh, I would say the four horsemen of the apocalypse, but it's not horsemen, it's uh, horse riders or horse people. Though horse people always makes me think of centaurs, so not centaurs. That would be weird. Uh, so yeah, uh, and I'm using the inks I got in the, mostly I'm using the inks that I got in the last Artful box. Uh, hopefully before this comes out you would have seen uh, you would have seen the unboxing for that one and so you know what this is if you haven't go watch it I mean obviously you know it's inks but you won't see what else is in there I hope this hasn't spoiled it for you oops if it has sorry uh, yeah so I'm putting down sort of vague shapes in water and then adding the ink to sort of make splodgy, as you can see, quite splodgy shapes. That's a technical term, splodgy, obviously. And it looks quite fun because it means you put down a bit of colour and it just moves out in quite a satisfying manner. And you're never quite 100% sure how it's going to look, which I quite like. Um, since these four are agents of the apocalypse and I suppose not necessarily chaos but definitely something not quite order as well um, so yeah they're a bit in the book and the TV show, they are—they're not horse riders; they're on bikes. All right, so here I am using a bit of uh, wax crayon, this plain wax crayon, to get some. What am I doing there? Oh, uh, yeah, I was trying to dry them out a bit because they were too wet. Uh, unfortunately what I'm doing here is putting some liquid tape or it's basically uh, oh god I can't remember the name of the word the name of the word I can't remember the word I'm looking for what's the word I'm looking for it is stuff you put down so you can paint over it and it leaves bits white or a previous colour I'll give you a hint. Unfortunately, uh, I did this, but then I think I didn't actually dry it enough. So it's stuck to some of the bits of paper more than others. So I've got a couple of rips from this. Um, I probably could have done with leaving it on a bit longer and to put laying up, layering up the colors a bit more before doing this, but hey. 
So yeah, it's quite good fun though. Uh, masking medium, that's it. I knew it would come to me eventually. God. I would say it's my age, but I've been like this, well, forever. I've always been like this, my brain. So busy trying to get ideas out that my brain just goes, nope, you cannot have the word. You're not allowed. It's not for you. Words are not for you. I should keep them in me. You cannot have them. So yeah, so I, I, unfortunately I didn't actually dry the, the ink properly before doing this. So bits of this work quite well and bits of this have just written the paper. But hopefully the overall effect will not be too bad. And this is just because I want to keep some bits a bit paler than other bits or I want to keep certain bits. Uh, yeah, and I'm drying it off because I'm impatient. As you can probably tell by the fact that I've speeded this video up so much. Uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, in the actual book, these are, and in the series, these are, they're not major parts, but they're sort of necessary. But they're quite, quite interesting characters. Because... I mean, what what motivates the anthropomorphic personification of a human idea? I mean, you've got the four riders here. Uh, you probably guess which one's which. So you've got war, famine, death, and pollution, weirdly enough. Uh, obviously, tradition is pestilence. Uh, yeah, war, famine, death and pollution. Quite ironically at the moment, considering that it is pestilence that we're kind of suffering from. But, you know. Oh, science is cool. Science does good stuff. Does good work. Science, you do good work. We like you. Anyway, so as I say, these are sort of physical manifestations of I, of concepts, and they are very human concepts. And like human beings, they're a bit quirky, a bit difficult to deal with, not always the most predictable. I should have used a bit more of the wax crayon but I think when I used the heat gun it actually melted it into the paper a bit much so that, that it, you can't see because it should make a resist which means that the uh, watery ink shouldn't go into shouldn't soak into the paper in those palaces but I think actually warming it was a bad idea or if I was going to warm it I should have done it put it on a bit thicker I don't know but yeah I decided to go with them basically being uh, each one having a colour theme. I mean, obviously, death has to be black uh, as a colour theme because, you know, the old Grim Reaper, uh, pretty distinctive dude. Or not dude, I don't know. It's a skeleton. I've, I've, I don't think anyone's ever seen the skeleton that closely to be able to establish whether it's a male or female skeleton. It is just a skeleton. Uh, it normally wears a robe, which, of course, just hides a lot of the uh, important bits. It is over six foot though, I would imagine. Unless it's a small one, I suppose. It could be a small reaper. Not a grim, not so much a grim reaper as a sort of slightly serious reaper. But yeah, so you've got war is red, famine is blue. I'm not sure why famine is blue. I knew it couldn't be green, and yellow, unfortunately, doesn't really show up very well on white. So, and I was trying to keep it down to the basic colours that I got in that set, and the colours were black, red, uh, black, red, yellow, blue, and green. The blue is actually brighter than I would expect for a Prussian blue, but still pretty good. Purple's good. I thought I thought pollution would be good in purple. 
mainly because I suppose that whole uh, petroly I mean could have done it with like a rainbow effect you know um, but I kind of like it yeah, I think they come out well but it was just an, an, it was an opportunity to um, make just <laughs> says me checking to see if the ink has gone all the way through but they're actually quite good because it's um, quite thick paper anyway and then it's double layered so what actually happens is it separates the layers out a bit I don't know what binds it together probably the force but yeah, so so just like layering on colours and trying to make it as deep and some deep and dark stuff. But yeah. Using I don't know which brush I'm using now. Sorry about my face that keeps creeping in. I was obviously concentrating. The thing is, with the um, with the camera I'm using at the minute, the live cam, I have to put it set it quite high, which means I keep keep forgetting not to put myself in the way. I mean, so far I haven't completely blocked the view, but uh, yeah. Sometimes I don't know. If you guys have ever done this, but when oh that's me checking. How does a hand work? What does a hand look like? Oh yeah, this is what a hand looks like. I realised I'd put the thumb on the death the wrong way around. It's like why would I do that? This is me removing the uh the liquid tape, which I'm using as a masking film here. As a masking medium. Uh my skin is so bad at the minute. I don't know why that made me think of that. It's probably because I keep seeing the side of my nose going, and I'm like, no, don't look at my face. Don't look at it. Yeah. It's quite satisfying as well to put on, to just stick the mask immediately. Do you remember when you were a kid and you used to put PVA glue on your hands and then just peel it off like it was another skin? A bit like that. It's quite, quite. F as you can see, I've done a terrible job with the blue on here. It's gonna rip. Yeah, see that bit's that bit's actually ripped. It's actually taken the paper with it. That one, which is really nice. I'm a using a little poking tool here to just get the last bit little bits off. Just basically, it makes it easy to pull pull them off once they're started. Uh, and I remember, oh, as another rip. Uh, the first time I used it, I managed to just. I, I, they said, oh, what you can do is you can gently rub it off with your finger, which sounds wrong in and of itself, but uh, gently rub it off with your finger. Uh, but what I found was, because the first time I ever did that, I was a teenager, it's just my finger grease got on it, and it was like, oh, no. That's me trying to make it a bit drier so it doesn't rip so much. The drier it is, the less likely it is to rip because it doesn't soak into the paper so much. But it also helps if the, the paper's not wet in the first place so you can see where the where it was it's blocked the ink going into the paper so you have these really interesting sort of because I wasn't very precise I mean you can use a um, like a fine tip you can use like a brush to put it in there or you can it's me trying to use that white pencil bloody thing a bit, a bit of definition in there Got using a rigger brush, which I don't often use. I don't know why I'm doing it. Giving myself an outline. Ugh. Ah, sorry about that. I'm just getting drawn into the picture there. Yeah.
quite nice to use a rigger just to get a bit of definition with things. I don't often use them because I generally I I like to paint big and splodgy. But uh, you know, it's something a bit different. I also quite like doing this because it gives me an excuse. Oh, that's a bit of yellow there. Because of course, flaming sword. Because you can't go wrong with a good old fashioned flaming sword. I mean, is it even really a fantasy program if you haven't got a flaming sword in it? That's me trying to give it a sort of steely look. Is that? At one point, I get out some silver paint because I, I gave up. I mean, I shouldn't really do things 100% from my imagination anyway. I should use references. There you go, a little bit of... Ah, uh, yeah, it was really weird. I had... So this is Stuart Semple Silver Acrylic, which is... It was nice. It's not very opaque, which is a bit weird. But it is definitely very silver. You'll see later on how... how ref well, it's not reflective, but it's just really, really sort of shimmery and metallic. It definitely catches the light, which was a bit different. I just like trying new things, what can I say? Yeah, going in there with the rigger, trying to get some nice straight lines. Well, as straight as anything around here. I'm not very good at straight lines. I get bored. After all, everyone knows the fastest... Uh, uh, is it the fastest journey between two points is a curved line? Or something, I don't know. I didn't finish school, what do I know? Kids finish school. Although at the moment. I quite like this one because it's got sort of... I'm trying to do the, the death there. It's kind of uh, come out a bit like... Well, if you ever see catacombs, those catacombs in France where they have like the little n niches for all the different bones. It's kind of like that. Or maybe like a... Um, I don't know. It's definitely looks like that one's embedded in something, which I quite like. You giving him eyes? Give them eyes. I mean, most figures tend to come alive once they have eyes, although they have. I have kind of given them all like crazy staring eyes. Cause heck. So yeah, so you got the icons. You got the sword and the scales and the timer and the I don't think it, the ti but the egg timer was actually or the hourglass was actually in the uh, in good omens but it's kind of the symbology for time and what have you is uh, it's just handy shorthand really uh, and then you've got the crown for pollution. Yeah, I'm just adding some little... Oh, uh, this is um, acrylic. So it's iridescent black acrylic. The From Dale Rowney. And it just adds a teeny tiny bit of shit. Where it's dark, it just has a tiny shimmer, which I quite like. Now I'm trying to give him a bit more definition this one I say him I don't know them give him some hair because in the book dis pollution is described as having long lanky hair long not lanky hair long lank hair I think but yeah 
Unfortunately, it kind of comes out looking a bit like Noel Fielding, which is a bit weird. Uh, and sometimes, you know. Sometimes things come out a bit like that. I think it's the long, thin face. And the long hair. Not, mu not as much volume as Noel Fielding. Noel Fielding has more uh, volume in his hair, obviously. But there's definitely a, a touch of... Oh. Maybe that's the other reason I didn't go for green on this. Maybe I didn't want it to look too much like the Hitcher. Oh, as you can see, I added some detail there, but I forgot to... Uh, I paused the camera to change what I was listening to and forgot to put the camera back on and then suddenly remembered to put the camera back on. So that's why there's a, there was a sudden leap in detail there. But yeah, I'm just trying to add a little depth here. Add a little depth. Add a little depth. Da, da, da. I'm trying to see. Sometimes you do things in the moment and you don't actually realise what it... Well, I mean, you often don't realise what you're doing until after the fact. I'm just wondering if there's I've put in anything here that I haven't meant to put in there. Again, check in to see that it hasn't gone through. But I've definitely given famine a spectre there, look. It's almost like there's someone tapping him on the shoulder, which is kind of weird. Yeah, obviously decided death is not black enough. Need more black for death. Sorry about that, I keep scraping my uh, headphones on the spit shield. Sorry, the pop filter. Just giving war a bit more of a thing. Giving her a bit of definition. Because, you know, heck, why not? That, by the way, that's the brush I'm using there is from the Artful Box, and it's a really nice brush to use. Very ni keeps a very nice point, as you can see, how thin those lines I'm doing are, even though it's quite a chonky brush. And it's nice, round, good to hold brush. I'm very pleased with it. I'm very pleased. Yeah, so sort of just going with the where the ink has sort of made shapes and going with those as guides to where things are. So it's it's not right, you know, but it's kind of where it's already shaded and where it's already stuff. It gives you a guide, so you've got some detail, but the detail is guided by the by where the colour happens to have fallen see famine was a tricky one because in the, in the book he's described as being quite sleek but I kind of want to exaggerate the fat the famininess of him I can't get yeah I can't get the face right on war eventually I will just give up and just like eh, it's three splodges it's fine. I tried to be like, oh, I know, I'll, I'll make the eyes all fiery. And it's like, uh. if you see a little flash of orange when I lean in there, that's because at that point, I think, yeah, there's orange. That'll be me wearing my pumpkin onesie because I was probably chilly that day. And again, with the headphones. But yeah. So yeah, I've probably overworked these a bit, but it's just quite a nice story because it's got so many elements in the actual books. It also gives me something to work from, if that makes any sense. Because they're inks and I'm using them with water, you can use them a bit like watercolours as well. So if there's a bit too much 
or if it's a bit too wet you can always uh, take some off with a bit of tissue or some people use I mean you can get things called watercolor sponges which are supposed to be particularly good oh cut did a very uncomfortable cut there uh, so you can have a close-up on the faces Ooh, or the top of their heads but yeah definitely not no fielding and yet kind of no fielding very strange well, I hope you've enjoyed those and I will say bye-bye and take care.